All right, joining me once again here on The Matthew Filipovich Show is my friend Michael Denzel Smith. Michael is a writer for Salon, Feministing, and The Nation magazine, which you can find at thenation.com. You can also follow him on Twitter at Michael Smith. Michael, thank you so much for being on the show again. Of course. Thanks for having me, Matt. All right, so Michael, many, many times on this show, you and I have talked about how frightening the NYPD actually is. Um, Mm -hmm. And we've talked about it a lot. You recently wrote at The Nation about NYPD Commissioner Bill Bratton and his new attempts to further raise the police state in New York City. Tell us about it. Yeah, um, so so Bratton is... I guess he's on a mission to show just the force of NYPD at this point. Uh, I, in the piece, I'm talking about how after officers Win Jin Liu and Rafael Ramos were killed, I was really afraid that the backlash that was going to happen was going to be that uh, officers were going to take the streets in a very violent way. They were going to be bashing in heads. They were going to be arresting way more people. I thought that was going to be the type of response that we would get. Uh, that's usually the answer from the state is a sort of a uh, crackdown of repression uh, and a violent answer to any violence that is um, that they experience. Uh, and so I was pleasantly surprised that their <laughs> answer was to essentially do what ha- activists had been asking them to do all along <laughs> and, and just not ar- like stop making unnecessary arrests or only arrest people when necessary. <laughs> I was like, when did we get into this place where we're talking about necessary versus discretionary arrest? Yeah. If we're, if shouldn't we're, shouldn't all arrest be absolutely necessary? That's sort of the point, right? It's like last resort. <laughs> only arrest someone when it's necessary. I didn't understand that whole thing, but that's I mean that's the police state. We're arresting people at the discretion of police officers who decide on the street in the moment whether or not they feel like they want to arrest the person for whatever the infraction is. Uh if they're in you know, they're judged on their numbers. They need to, to make sure. So anyway, I was happy to see that that, that was their reaction. Apparently what they were saved, <laughs> what, what they were saving up for was Bratton to come in and say, well, that's over now. Here's the real backlash. Here's what we're actually going to do. So he announced uh, the special task force uh, that was, that's going that was going to handle uh, in his original statement that was going to handle anti terrorism and protest. <laughs> yep. This highly this specially trained, <laughs> highly armed force was supposed to to be able to handle anti terrorism and protest because those are the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, It's Black Lives Matter and Al-Qaeda. They're the exact same thing. (laughs) Right. Um, He backtracked and said, you know, it's going to be two separate forces. One that's not going to have all the, you know, the the high range. He backtracked after a major speech that he gave on it, too. A long major speech where he, it wasn't like some mistake. He literally detailed this out as this is what this is. And then people flipped out and he's like, oh, no, that's not true. (laughs) So to handle things that happen, like what happened in Paris and Mumbai and here with our protests. <laughs> yeah, yeah. anyone to give a machine, anyone wants to give the cops machine guns too. That's machine another fun thing. <laughs> and, and special armor and all this type of stuff, and that's what it was supposed to handle anti-terrorism and protest. Like one, cops should not be in the business of anti-terrorism. Like, they're just yeah. not their purview. Like they, they can't. I'm sorry, we just give so much responsibility to police to do so many different things that they are not, and we turn, we've turned them into a paramilitary force by saying that this is, this is their job description, this is their duty to protect us from whatever threat, right? So, yeah. I mean, anti-terrorism, I, I, I don't think our military should be involved in this. I, I, I don't think there's right. a military response to it. But then if there's not a military response, there definitely isn't a police response. Like, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, that's, a, that's an ideological battle that, you know, people we're, we're going to continue to have. Um, but but they, even if they're, they're, they're dealing with anti-terrorism, it definitely shouldn't be the same people dealing with anti-terrorism that are supposed to police protest. Like, that, that <laughs> should not 
beings did the same thing. You don't need, you shouldn't need the same weaponry for the same for, for those things. Uh, but what it signaled to me is that here is here's the violent crackdown. Here is them saying, okay, you are a threat. You are a threat to our public safety. You are a threat to our our tranquility. You. We, we do not appreciate you being out in the streets and disrupting, you know, dying in in the streets, dying in in businesses, uh, going to, to brunch spots and disrupting the, the order of things. Here's, here's the way that we're cracking down. We're lumping you in with terrorists. You're, this is over. We're done. Uh, and and, and it, it's honestly, I, I'm going to say, like, it's not that it's kind of expected and not even the scariest thing. I think that, uh, you know, to have a, a force dedicated to that is kind of, kind of new, but not really. But yeah. it, I don't think that it does so much more in terms of harassing Muslim, Arab, uh, and black po- populations in New York city. Like there are, there are these things they're already doing. <laughs> it's just like, you're going to get bigger weapons. That, you're going to get bigger weapons to do it. Um, the thing that is frightening, absolutely frightening to me, like beyond scary, is him suggesting to the state legislature that we should we should make resisting arrest a felony charge. It's currently mm-hmm. a misdemeanor. He would turn it into a felony charge. So that anyone that the police deem to be resisting arrest to get will, will be facing felony charges in a court of law for yeah. who knows what. I mean, we watched Eric Garner be killed. They were essentially going to arrest him for resisting arrest at that moment. <laughs> like you would have turned him into a felon for just saying to them, I'm not doing anything. Right. Yeah. I watched this video of uh, a public defender in San Francisco who's telling the police that she's not going to allow them to take pictures of her client. And they, uh, they said, we're going to arrest you for resisting arrest. She wasn't under arrest. Yeah. So you have this charge here that, the, that is, I mean, completely at the discretion of the police. There's, there's no, like, there's no concrete uh, definition that whereby the police are, are required to uh, to adhere to um, when talking about resisting arrest. It is completely up to their discretion whether or not someone in the, is, is resisting, uh, even when they're not technically under arrest. Um, and so now what Bratton is seeking to do is take that completely ambiguous charge and turn it into a felony. Like saddle people with felony records for resisting arrest, or on on the other side of that, knowing that it's a felony, have people completely beholden to the police and their directives, and what no matter what they're saying to you, because you fear that you step out of line, you're going to get a resisting arrest charge, and it's not just going to be a misdemeanor anymore. You're going to have to face like serious prison time for this and, and that that's frightening to me because uh i mean not only is it another means of feeding the prison system i mean we, we could talk about how the, the 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 prison population is actually coming it's coming down like incrementally it's coming down just a little bit maybe yeah. here's another way of getting it to go back up because we've become <laughs> so dependent on it like yeah. well, again we're criminalizing more and more things like here we're, we're talking about something that's a minor infraction being turned into a major one because of what? Like, what is the impetus here so that people take the police more seriously and so that they, they don't have to, uh, so, so that they don't have instances uh, whereby anyone is challenging their authority. Uh, and so now you can arrest them for whatever you're arresting them for and then throw on a, a resisting arrest charge or just arrested for a resisting arrest. And now you're going to see the prison system again. Uh, so this is uh, super scary to me that that's even an idea that was being floated. 